In the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise now has a total of 11 different games that create a deep and complex story. Most recently, FNAF Hope Wanted 2 was just released a day ago, and although it's only been out for one day, this game holds so much depth lore, story, and most importantly, mysteries, with the most significant one being the ending. Not only is the ending confusing and complicated, but it might even raise more questions about the franchise than solve them. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to solve the FNAF Help Wanted 2 ending and attempt to break down what exactly it means. This video will contain spoilers about Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2 that will include important story aspects and the ending, so let's get started. Before we can even begin to go over the ending, let's first go over how the player would even get there. The gameplay style is very similar to the first Help Wanted game in the sense that the player is inside of a pizzeria with a monitor in front of them. This monitor has six base game modes in the form of computer folders and in each folder there are mini games where prizes can be earned once you beat them. But when beating all of the available mini games inside of the base game modes, the player will be awarded with a Faz Wrench, the same one used by Cassie in FNAF Ruin to open doors and solve puzzles. Here it serves the same purpose in opening a locked door in the corner of the pizzeria. After opening the door you'll find a Princess Quest arcade machine and the same same signal jammer we've seen in FNAF Ruin. When disabling the signal jammer, you'll have the option to take off the Vanny mask, again just like in FNAF Ruin. Taking the mask off, it's revealed that the player is actually in the FNAF 6 pizzeria under the Pizzaplex, the same one we saw in Security Breach where the sinkhole led to Burn Trap, and here the sinkhole is even behind the monitor, and it's obvious this is the exact same location. Taking off the Vanny mask also unlocks harder versions of certain mini games that were once unavailable. Again, beating these will award the player with prizes, and when beating all of them, them, you essentially beat the game and unlock the real ending. In the ending, you are awarded with a present. When opening the present, you unlock a collectible figure, but before you can even collect it, a charging station appears in front of you. The charging station then opens, before Glitchtrap's hand peers out grabbing the door. Then, out of nowhere, five Nightmare and Netbots appear in front of you and jump scare you. You are then presented with a small cutscene in the perspective of a staff bot. It's the exact same moment from Ruin when Cassie first finds the Vanny mask from the perspective of a staff bot. The credits then roll, ending Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2. Again, this ending is very confusing and it raises more questions than answering them. But finally, let's start to attempt to solve this ending and what it means. Now at the surface, it may just seem that this is Glitchtrap escaping into the real world, but we've seen that exact same scenario in the first game. In that game, Glitchtrap escapes the virtual reality world by implementing his virus into Vanny, which influences her actions in Security Breach. I also think it's important to note that Glitchtrap is not a reincarnation of William Afton, but it's instead the Mimic trying to become William Afton and copy his actions. But the point still stands that in the first game, Glitchtrap escapes into the real world, meaning that's not what's happening in this ending. It's almost the opposite. A very important detail in this ending is right before the charging station appears, the Vanny mask is taken off, meaning that the ending takes place in the real world. But how is this possible if we see Glitchtrap even though we know for certain that he was never a physical entity? Well, I think that this is a hallucination or a vision of the Mimic being released into a physical form. This would make sense as the charging station rapidly appears in front of you when your screen glitches, and because it wasn't there before, it leads me to believe that again, it's just a vision of the Mimic. Something similar actually happens in many mini games where your screen will glitch revealing an image of Glitchtrap, which is why I think this is happening in the ending. Now, why did the game developers choose to use Glitchtrap instead of the Mimic? Well, there can be various reasons, but none of them impact the point that I believe this is a vision of the Mimic. But this raises yet another question. Why does beating all the mini games without the Vanny mask reveal all the staff bots? Well, I think that the Mimic is actually using the player to gather resources the same way he used Vanessa. I strongly believe this because in most of the mini games without the Vanny mask, there are various artifacts and items from Ruin pointing to the fact that these two games are connected. More specifically, we really see this in the Salon Roxy Repair mini game. Like I mentioned before, any events without the Vanny mask mean they're happening in the real world, which means that these few mini games are are also happening within the real world. So in this Roxy minigame, the player must fix Roxy's destroyed face from the end of Security Breach where they ultimately fail. They instead end up using this mask which we also see in Ruin. This would explain why Roxy has a different design from the end of Security Breach as it was actually the player from Help Wanted altering her design. But most importantly, in the corner of her desk we see this Roxy walkie talkie. The same one that Cassie uses in Ruin, so it may be possible that the player gave this to Cassie so she and the Mimic can communicate. Which 
would eventually lead to his release, but how these two people know each other is a question I'll get back to later in the video. So what if an electrician was sent to the pizzaplex to gather what was left of this disaster? But under the pizzeria, they find the FNAF 6 location where they are ultimately influenced by the mimic to gather resources to help him escape. That's why the pizzeria has slight differences in details and designs, but I also don't think that the player didn't notice they were being influenced. Many of you might remember MatPat's most recent theory where he discusses tally marks around the pizzeria and how he believes someone left them there as a message. Now what if that someone is the player from Help Wanted 2? What if they're leaving a message for someone warning them of the mimic? This might also explain the circus baby plushies as they are actually in one of the mini games. But moving back to the ending, I do think that the player did end up bringing the mimic enough resources which is why he sent the staff bots to take them out. But this just leaves us one final question to wrap up this theory. Who do we play as? Well this is actually a popular theory that I strongly believe in and it's that we play as Cassie's father. Let's look at the evidence. In the very beginning of Ruin, Cassie says this when getting a Faz wrench. A Faz wrench? It's just like my dad's. She's very clearly pointing to the fact that her father was an electrician for Fazbear's Entertainment and because she's talking about him in past tense, it's suggesting that he is no longer with her. And this would make sense if he'd gone missing in the pizzeria during the events of Help Wanted 2. But why is this important and why does it matter? Well, in the very last cutscene, we are the staff bot and I think it's more than just the perspective of it. I think that the player or Cassie's father was actually uploaded to the staff bot system. Meaning that this isn't just a staff bot giving Cassie the Vanny mask, but instead it's a father giving his daughter a mask that that ultimately helps her in her journey. Even the way that Cassie looks at the staff bot is worth mentioning. She almost looks at it in a comforting and trusting way. And when you get the statue award for this moment, the staff bot also looks like it is comforting her just like the way I think a father would. Now, some might argue that Cassie's father's mind being uploaded into a staff bot seems far stretched, but in the current world of FNAF, this would make sense. We've already seen the opposite where the Mimics virus uploads itself into Vanessa's mind, so why can't the opposite happen? So, the FNAF Hub 1 and 2 ending is Cassie's father gathering resources for the mimic and when he ultimately does he is taken out by staff bots and his mind is uploaded into a staff bot system where he meets his daughter one last time and gives her the vanny mask but this is just a theory. Now by no means is this theory foolproof as it's missing certain parts, like why is Cassie's father helping the mimic if he's aware of the danger? But again, this game has only been released for one day at the time of this recording, meaning more evidence and lore will be found which may or may not support this theory. And this theory isn't mine alone, I've obviously used information gathered by the community to make what I think is a decent starting point to solving Help Wanted 2. But with all of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if I should cover the secret ending. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this and thanks for watching.